Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max hosting the channel and this is part 2 of my season review for the All Blacks 2021 season. Today's video is going to be covering the forward pack and I'm going to basically tell you my feelings about how they performed this season and yeah, let's hop into it. So first off with the hookers. I wasn't really too convinced that Fozzie was doing too well with coaching these four guys at the end of 2020. We only had two hookers with a decent amount of minutes. That's of course Cody Taylor and Dane Coles. Asafo Almua wasn't really given much game time by the coaches at all in the year 2020. So I was very concerned. I was thinking, you know, man, who the heck's going to be our fourth choice? Is Almua actually going to have a decent go at test level? And behold, Summer Sony Taukiaho had a massive debut year of Test Rugby. He wasn't initially called up to the squad for the mid-year tests against Tonga and Fiji, and he debuted in the third test of those and was absolutely fantastic. Asafu Amuwa's also got a decent spread of minutes this year as well, whereas although Dane Coles is not the greatest in terms of discipline and the set piece, he does at least entertain the crowd by scoring some tries. Cody Taylor's obviously the clear first choice hooker, as he should be. He is the best hooker in world rugby right now. And so I'm going to give the hookers a rating of a B for this year, because I do think the hookers were very good. It's quite clear who's where in the pecking order. And whenever either of these four players is coming on, they at least know all the calls and everything like that. The one downside that's stopping the hookers from being an A is the fact that Dane Coles has halted the development of Asafu Aomua at the Hurricanes, like I've said before. And this is kind of creeping into test level as well because Aomua of these four players is possibly the one with the weakest line out throwing. And to get him into that uh, mindset, etc., you need to have him test is throwing in big games like Super Rugby playoffs or test matches and he's just not getting enough of a chance to get that done as I'm speaking. Whereas we move over to the props and I'm less in favour with how they performed this year. Um, Nepo Laulala probably played a few too many minutes this year. Um, Ofatu Ungafasi had quite a bad year with injury and stuff as well, so when you're struggling with a couple knee ops, you're not really going to perform to the best of your abilities. I think tight head prop will be in a much better place if Tu Ungafasi can come back next year and be injury free. That way we don't have to rely on Tyra Lomax, who I think had a pretty bad case of second year syndrome. This is kind of like his, um, his... Second full year, I guess, as an All Black. He debuted all the way back in 2018 when he was very young. He um, started to get a bit more game time last year, and he kind of stepped up to Tuunga Fasi's place while Tuunga Fasi was injured heaps this year. And um, I think his discipline does need to be worked on a fair bit. Maybe Alex Fidel can come on from a bit more at the Canes. Whereas the loose head prop, Joe Moody, is definitely on the way out. His contract expires at the end of the 2022 Super Rugby season. And he's 33 years old right now. I believe he's going to do what Wyatt Crockett did and hang his boots up from Test Rugby, that is. Halfway through this World Cup cycle. Um, loose head prop, we've got a lot of promising players coming up, but they're not really get, um, getting much of a chance, rather, at test level. Um, George Bauer, probably a wee bit old to take over from Moody, so I think big Carl Tuina Kawafi is going to end this World Cup cycle with the most minutes in this particular jersey. Um, Ethan De Groot, I think, is kind of the leader in terms of these loose head props with a promising future, but the other guys need to be showing a bit of faith when Joe Moody goes. And maybe um, George Bauer isn't really the guy going forward, I don't think. He's great at the scrum, but as I've said in the coach's video, look, um, we're, we're really good with like winning our own rucks. So why can the tight five forwards and the props in particular not contest the opposition rucks? They're just not doing it enough, guys. I'm going to give the props a C-. minus. They were kind of slightly below par this year, if you ask me. 
We're now going to go with the locks. As I said in my depth chart video, it is very clear cut indeed who's where in the pecking order. It's good to see that young Josh Lord was showing some faith since Party Party Parkinson's had some injury trouble. Um, very unfortunate for Mitchell Dunshay, Quinton Strange and Parkinson himself with these young guys coming up it's possibly a bridge too far for them to be All Blacks right now Sam Whitelock I think is the man for the job in terms of continuing on as captain Patrick Tui Pelosha and Scott Barrett are both very experienced players we can rely on going forward but Brody Vitalik, I think, is past his best. The height of his career is behind him. He's been in and out of the team with injury ever since 2017, um, since he had a family tragedy. And because he's just come in and out of the team, he doesn't really demand the respect from the younger players um, in my books anymore. Even though seven years ago he was World Player of the Year, remember seven years is a long time in terms of sport and most professional athletes have shorter careers than seven years. A lot of things can change in that time period. Tupo Va'i I think does need more game time, but I'm not sure if he's going to make the World Cup squad if Brody Vitalik continues to stay around and be given the green light by the coaching staff. Um, I'm going to give the locks a B, um, because as I said, the depth chart in terms of where the locks are is very clear cut, very strong, and the amount of experience these players have is going to be great for the World Cup, and Josh Lord, very talented, him and his Taranaki partner Tupova, he can come in and provide really good cover come the World Cup, and I like what's going on with the depth chart, as I said once more. Now for the final category of the forwards, it's the Lucys, and this is really one of the strongest elements about the All Blacks. Um, Akira Iwani and Ethan Blackadder will become world-class players if they can start competing for the ball at the breakdown a wee bit more. Um, Akira Iwani's very, very good off the bench as well. I'd like to see a bit more of Iwani coming off the bench, whereas against, um, don't want to curse here, Crapper nations um like the wallabies we can give him a start and stuff he can just wreak havoc and he can run the ball like how he does for the blues so often um i think Adi savia is still the best player in the world he's been magnificent from number eight and he's played over 1000 minutes this world cup cycle 2021 was yet another year where he was on fire how on earth was he not nominated for world rugby player of the year man i do think that uh hoskins satushu needs to play more minutes but whenever he's playing He's fantastic. Luke Jacobson had a wonderful comeback. Very, very solid season for Luke Jacobson. And the only thing that's making sure I'm not giving the loose forwards an A- minus is Sam Kane. I believe that um, if he retires or has another injury, um, the loose forwards will be in a better place because it means we can have Ethan Blackadder getting a bit more action. Whereas Dalton Papali'i, if you want to start Savia at number 8, you've got to start Papali'i at 7 now, I believe. He's really shown his potential. He's no longer just a guy waiting on the fringes. He's become the real deal, and he's very close, rather, to being the finished product and everything, especially with that performance against Ireland. If that, if that guy got more turnovers in that game, would have been a 10 out of 10. The thing is with Papali'i is too, with him on the field, it kind of balances the line out, and you don't need both locks to lift the guy for him to be a genuine jumper. Um, Shannon Frizzell, I do believe, is going to be the only change in the loose forwards going forward as well. Um, other than Shannon Frizzell, I think the loose forwards are going to stay the same until 2023. Um, pretty much all of them had amazing seasons this year, so I'm going to give the loose forwards an A-. minus. It's one of our strongest areas in terms of the All Blacks this year. Well done to the loose forwards for their amazing 2021 season. So to recap this video, I've given the hookers for this year a B, I've given the locks a B, I've given the props a C-, minus, and of course the loose forwards are the best thing about our forward pack. They can have an A-. minus. Now all we need to do to fix the forwards is to have the tight five give the Lucys and the backs more a platform to make turnovers and make great meters off. That's our one area of weakness, I believe. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I love making videos on this channel, so be sure to support me on Instagram, Discord, join the mailing list for when our website's out, and of course, there's a Patreon too. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and I'll see you later, guys.